Hi everyone, so a new video and a new car today. I just thought I'd do a quick update on the channel as well. So the Audi A1 is just waiting for its appointment for the body shop. Um, I have filmed the next video about two, three weeks ago when I come back off holiday. I just haven't had a chance to edit that video together, but I promise once this video is live on the channel, I'll post the next video within a few days, maximum a week after this one is on the channel. Also, it is getting so hard now to win a car on Copart. If you do Copart yourself, let us know in the comments what you think. And if you do win a car, half the time it's on reserve and the reserve prices are so high. Let's say, I don't know, you won a car for £6,000. The reserve's like 13000 You just have to keep, then you have to bid on the, the car the following week. This particular car, which is on the channel, which I've won, I've won that car six times before the insurance would actually let me have that car. It's not a particular car I'd normally go for. As you know, I do pretty much VAG cars if you watch all the other videos on the channel. But when I see this car, I just thought it's a perfect family car. You see a lot so on the road. Instead of talking about it, let's show you what I've won. I just want to tell you guys, so, so just before um, I do the walk around, I bought this car on Thursday the 20th of July and then got it delivered to myself on Friday the 21st of July. Uh, so yeah, I work permanent nights, so I think I must have went to sleep about 6, 7 in the morning. My missus woke me up, well I didn't realise the time obviously until I woke up obviously, uh, about 9 o'clock in the morning, so I've only had what, 2 hours sleep and she, Nathan, Nathan. You toucan here, you toucan. And I'm like, what are you on about toucan? Your car's here. Yeah, so when she finally said, your car's here, I really, you know, quickly get some clothes on and quickly pay my mate. But yeah, that's another thing. How do you pronounce this car? Obviously, is it Hyundai or Hyundai? And I've always called this a Tuscan for some reason. I've never had one of these before. And I started eBay searching for parts when, I, when it said on Copart, pay now. And I was typing in on the eBay, Hyundai Tuscan obviously t-u-s-c-o-n and there's only like 10 listings i think two cars out for sale that are spelt like that and a couple other little bits and i'm thinking this car is so popular on the road and there's only 10 listings no it's tuxen not tuscan i've been spelling it i've been calling it the wrong name so what is it is it hyundai or hyundai there was an advert about this how to actually pronounce it what is it guys so here's the new car for the channel let us know in the comments what you think guys so i'm going to call it hyundai tuxen if i'm wrong Correct me in the comments. It's a 2017, but very late 2017 on a 67 plates, registered 29th of December 2017. So nearly 2018. Uh, it's a 1.7 diesel, 55,000 miles, uh, six speed manual box on this. Would have been nice as an auto, as the size of the car. I always get people asking me, can you get me an automatic? But always on Copart, the autos just go for stupid money, like near enough prices that a non-category car is fetching so i just bid what i can get at a decent price basically and that's why this is a manual <laughs> but yeah damage wise it's just this front corner you probably see that the front windscreen's cracked that's from the airbags have deployed in the dashboard that's the reason why that's cracked and this one is a category n also it's euro six meaning um it will be ULES free, so ULES is slowly coming out of London into the boroughs. So a lot of the people now are looking for Euro 6 cars, which this is one which is decent. Also, no AdBlue, as AdBlue is getting expensive these days, like, what, £30 for 10 litres? Obviously, I do my normal checks, my HPI checks, make sure there's no outstanding finance, or if it's not been written off previously, uh, that's all clear. But on the MOT history, there was a few advisories the last two years, which were tyres. But I guess the previous owners had four matching brand new tyres there. Hankook, which are a decent mid-range tyre. And as you can see, the 18th week of 2022. So that's one less thing I need to buy for the car. As when I was bidding, I was expecting to have to put tyres on this. Uh, to be honest, I am quite surprised how much extras is on this car. I thought it was just going to be a quite basic one, but no 
It's got electric folding mirrors. Uh, obviously the top, that ain't an extra from manufacturer, but it's what someone's put on. The roof bars, it's got the faux um, bike rack. Another bike rack, that black one, I think now that's just a universal one to be honest. And I thought I was gonna have to drill all these um, barrels out, but no, luckily the keys are in the glove box, which is another good bit of news. The rest of the car, there is no other damage apart from what you can see, but we'll look into that in a minute. It's a nice, tidy car. Uh, on the back, you've got reverse sensors and a reverse camera, which is brilliant. The rest of the car, honestly, it's a nice, tidy car, but I'll be honest, I did think that the roof and the bonnet, well, I'm not bothered about the bonnet because I need to replace it, but there was loads of scratches in this area and in the, in the middle of the bonnet. Obviously, the bonnet I've got to replace and paint anyway, so I weren't bored about that, but I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to get the roof painted. But no, I think it was the camera lens. I'll show you on... I'll show... I'll post some photos now, the listing of Copart, and you'll see what I mean. The roof looked like it was all scratched up. As you can see, it's not. So this side of the bumper's all good. So the fog light, daytime running light, obviously this passenger headlight's all good. It's not damaged the wing at all. All the wheels are nice and clean, no curb marks. Obviously the bonnet's had it. Driver's headlight, the bumper, the grill's damaged on this corner. The lower part of the bumper. Crash bar has been touched underneath. This is this uh, fiber optic sensor. So if you remember the Audi A3 I rebuilt for my missus, uh, that was the protect, um, pedestrian protection sensors. So on the Audis and a lot of the VAG cars, they have a sensor, either corner of the bumper with that silicon tube. This has this fiber optic thing with a big, um, I've had a look online, with this big sensor box on that passenger side. I'm sure that's about 12 or 1300 from dealer. People are charging like seven, eight hundred pounds on eBay. So I have noticed parts for this car seem to be quite expensive. Another thing, I've done a lot of Peugeot, Citroëns, Fords uh, previously to doing YouTube, and I've noticed on the cheaper manufacturers, you can get the cars at a decent price, but the parts are always dear. Like Peugeots and Citroëns, uh, when I've rebuilt them before, if I go to main dealers, let's say I want a bumper bracket for the driver's side, they only come as pairs, so you're paying for two. I know you can sell one on eBay, but if, you, if you're always busy, you ain't got time for that, and you're paying double the price, if you get what I'm saying. That's why I've mostly stayed to VAG cars, but I saw this nice family car, and I thought, let's give it a try, something different. So I'll just pop the bonnet. I guess because that bonnet was slightly open, the underneath has just got so dusty. Uh, being this one was at Wisbeach Co Park, but yeah, no. Obviously, it's cut in, so you'd expect non-structural. That doesn't always mean the case, uh, as you know. I think I previously stated, I've had cars that are cat ends that really should be cat s's, and I've had cars that are cat s and should be cat in. But yeah, um, no chassis leg damage. This piece here is broke, which is part of the top cover for the headlight. This top cover's cracked. The radiator, I've got, I would say, unlucky on this one. As you can see, there's nothing in the expansion tank. I can see where it's, where it's broke on this rad. There's a little tiny outlet just here. And if you can just see, it's broke just there. So the actual whole rad on the sides, and obviously I haven't stripped this car down. There might be further damage. But from what I can see at the minute, it's just that little outlet that's broke off. But it's still going to need replacing because, you know, if you temp did like, I don't know, a Q-bond repair or a plastic weld, you know, if, if that under pressure pops off when I've sold this car, it doesn't look good. So I'm going to get a brand new uh, radiator for it. I can see the uh, front panel has got some damage. So it needs a new front panel. AC condenser, I don't know yet, but I know it's still working. It is cold. I haven't had the car running for long because obviously, well, if the rad's not damaged anymore and just that outlet, I would say it's still got some fluid further at the bottom. It's just the top part and obviously the expansion tank, but you still don't want to risk it. I don't want to overheat this car. But yeah, I this blue bit just here, which this is the for the screen washer bottle, 
and that will be the outlet pipe to go to the rear of the car for your rear windscreen washer jet. On the photos of Copart, I thought that was a bungee cord, I'm not going to lie. It, if you say if that's a photo, you'd think, well, do you think it's a bungee cord? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a bungee cord, to be honest. But yeah, so, so far, obviously crash bar, all these sensors. So the bonnet actuators have gone off. Well, I know this one has for sure. Uh, I'll see if I can do this one-handed. I can't really demonstrate, but 100% this one's gone off. I don't think the passenger side's gone off, but I haven't plugged diagnostics in yet. Diagnostics in the unit. Uh, there's also another actuator on the bonnet latch itself. So you've got three actuators, and then you've got that expensive fiber optic bit, but I've seen on these hinges, people are charging up 300 pound each second hand on eBay, and then like 400 pound for this one. It's, it's quite expensive prices to be honest, guys. But oh well, it's got to be done. This car's getting fixed. I drove to Milton Keynes and got this headlight. I found this on Facebook Marketplace. I think the guy's name was Christoph. Really nice lad. And I got this for £80. These are fetching 250 to 300 quid on eBay. Um, obviously, it's a used item, but very good condition. These marks here, just dirt. That will come off. And all the lugs are mint. It's never been repaired when i say repaired i don't mean lug kits i mean like plastic welding you don't want to see all stuff like that uh but yeah and it comes with that top cover i need which you can see here is all broke which is brilliant news obviously i need this top one bumper wise i have seen i've, I've been getting some prices from uh, i think they're smith's hyundai in peterborough uh, i spoke to martin one of the parts guys and the bonnet weren't too bad price i think it was 300 Around about 300 plus VAT, but he'll do me a discount, which is very grateful of him. I do appreciate. So yeah, bonnet free, 300 cent plus VAT, but the bumper's in two sections. So you've got the top part, which obviously this part just here, and then you've got the lower part. So I think that one was like 300 plus VAT, and I think this one was 260 plus VAT. But then I need all these lights as well, these plastic trims. I think this grill just here is okay from what I can see without taking the bumper off. You need the grill as well, which is about hundred pounds second hand. There is a bumper with everything, obviously in wrong color white on eBay, 650 pounds. You think that's a lot of money or not? I thought it sounds a lot for a bumper for you know this particular car or brand shall I say, but I think I might be better off doing that because then I've got everything, the lights, and then I'll just get a brand new genuine bonnet. What do you think, guys? There was obviously, you can go the route of going insurance approved panels where the bonnet's 160 pound, but previous times I've used insurance approved panels, I just don't like how they fit. What do you guys reckon? 160 pound for obviously a pattern part or 320 for a genuine item, which is gonna fit proper, once and proper. So what would you guys wanna see next on this car? Would you wanna see me doing the interior, so all the dashboard, airbag, seat belts, or would you wanna me start stripping the front down? Uh, Cause obviously I ordered the dashboard kit on Thursday. I don't know if it'll be here early week, like Monday, Tuesday, or midweek, or do the front end, strip it, uh, start taking, tearing it down, and then we'll do the inside. Let us know what you guys want, wanna see. Another thing on this, the wind, windscreen, is very expensive so i use a friend of mine alan who owns 24 sun windscreens in peterborough i'm used to paying 140 250 max for a windscreen this one 350 pound and that's like mates rate if you get what i'm trying to say it's only because it's got a camera in that screen i, I think that camera's for the lane assist but yeah it's not it's not a very cheap screen but i need it so he's going to come and install that for me in the week next week it's where the parts prices are a bit daunting i don't need that much paint work on this car so it's it's not too bad if you get what i'm trying to say plus i think it's going to be a very nice car when it's done a lot of car for the money so i'll quickly show you the inside apart from the accident and obviously i guess these mats are just filthy from uh being in the copart yard well, especially the back. It's a very nice, tidy car. The back looks like it's never been sat in. There's a little mark just here, but I would say the driver had a coffee in here, and there's coffee all over here, 
and obviously that little mark yeah so extras now so obviously like you know the electric folding mirrors you've got lane assist on this one uh, front heated seats it's got touch screen sat nav i'll just get the key take this they've got um front and rear dash cams in this car no memory card in the front i had a look on the back not to, just to post the footage uh, just to see, you know, if I could see what kind of speed the accident was or how it happened and tell you guys instead of showing because obviously it's not nice to post obviously someone's accident But yeah, the footage on the rear one there was nothing on there I think they must have like set the memory card to uh, Not automatically clear the old data. It was just continuously filming until the memory card was full On here it's still saying whiz beach. I don't know why I've not really I don't live on Whiz Beach, but it's just showing you. Uh, what else? Bear me a second. Obviously, reverse camera. Heated seats. Plenty of USB ports. Not USB, sorry. Cigarette. Well, you don't really call them cigarette lighters these days, do you? But you know what I'm trying to say. You've got two in the front. Uh, stop, start, parking sensors. Some sort of hill thing. A mode for the steering wheel sport and normal i've also got half well nearly half tank of diesel as well it's quite surprising normally the cars i win i've had all the fuel taken out here's the passenger side in the rear uh nice and clean as i did say and you've got all the net cargo nets on the back of the seats this was quite nice see some cup holders and the rear seats they're quite cool they actually um pull that lever you can either pull them all the way forward to uh, to load big stuff in the car or you can hold it and that will just move one click forward or one click back, reclining rear seats, which is quite cool. So I'll just quickly go into the passenger side front. Glove box, I was expecting this to be empty. Two folders. I've got a cheers to you. Might send that to somebody. <laughs> yeah, two folders. Which folder will I show you? Bear me a second. I think... Service book record. I think it's towards the back, if I remember rightly. Yep. Full high and domain dealer history. The last time it got serviced was October 22. 44,000 miles, so it's got 55, so 100% due. I always, if it was my own car, like the Miss Say 3, every 8,000 miles I'd do the oil. I don't believe all in this long life oils. Just another reason for your engine to go wrong, I would say. Lock and walnut key, some plasters, and some keys. These keys are for those roof bars, which is brilliant news. I haven't got to do no drilling. Worst case, so whoever buys the car off me, they can, I don't like these universal ones, the, these ones, but you've got the the original full, full or full bike rack and you've got the roof bars. So if the new owner wants them, they can have them. If not, I'll take them off and I'll put them on eBay, but I will give them the chance, you know, doesn't bother me. It's also got a cooled glove box. To be honest, I think it's a lovely spec car, a lot of car for the money. And I think it'll be a very nice family car for someone. Honestly, nice spec. When this, because obviously I just see it on Copart as a Hyundai um, Tucson. It just said SE. So I just thought, you know, like if you've got an Audi SE and 7S line, it'll be very basic. But no, it's a lovely spec. Yes, it ain't got Xenons, but you've got nice LED daytime running lights. Let, let us know in the comments what do you guys think. Yeah, that's going to be an end for today's video. I appreciate you all for watching. And if you did like today's video, smash that like button as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, guys, click that subscribe button. It's absolutely free and it really will help with the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video. It'll be probably the A1 video next Well, it will be, sorry. But yeah, let us know in the comments. Do you want to see the interior done first or me stripping down the front to see what damage we've got? Cheers, guys.